What is up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we are going to be talking about how to draw closer to God. We're going to be going over and reading James chapter 4. This is going to be so, so good. Be sure to stick around. Stick around to the end to obtain all this information. And listen, let me know your thoughts in the end. Be sure to leave a comment down below. And if you want to be a part of what I am doing on here for the Lord, be sure to subscribe. And yes, with that being said, let's get straight into this video. All right, so we are reading out of James chapter 4. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 8. And listen, you've got to pay close attention because all of these verses plays a big role in drawing closer to God. With that being said, it says right here in James chapter 4, verse 1. One, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasures that war in your members? And listen, members actually means our flesh. And the Bible teaches that nothing good comes from our flesh. Our flesh is evil. It is polluted. It says in Galatians chapter 5 that our spirit is constantly at war with our flesh. Guys, we are not called to walk carnally minded, but we are called to walk spiritually minded for Jesus. Next, it says in verse 2, You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And this is a huge issue when it comes to drawing closer to God. Not only do we walk carnally minded and, and live for our fleshly desires, but we go to everything else before we go to God. We go to other people, other things, other places, other sources. And I believe God is saying to you right now, Make me first. Go to me first. Listen, we need to put our relationship with God first over everything. All right, verse 3. This is so, so good. It says right here, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Now, the word amiss actually means a mistake. Wait, when was the last time you said to God, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Because guys, it is not about us. It is about God's will and what he wants to do. Our mentality of, as believers should be this. God, whatever you want me to do, I want to do wherever you want me to go. I want to go however you want me to live. I want to live. But wait, here's, a, here's the issue. I mean, we will say this often, but yet we, we disregard the most basic, simple commands that God has given us in Scripture. Before we, we are asking for God's will, we need to be sure we are already obeying His will and what He has taught us and commanded us to do in the Word of God, because this holds His will in this. All right, next it says in verse 4, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Now listen, this plays a huge role in drawing closer to God because it actually says adulterers and adulteresses. So when we friend the world, we're actually committing adultery on God. Now listen. We are called as God's chosen people. It has always been in the heart of God to have a people consecrated to him, separate of the world and, and what the world does and lives for. The Bible says in James or in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We are called to be separate, set apart. We are not called to live for the world or the things of the world, but we're called to live holy like and walk how Jesus walked. Listen, the world is wicked. The devil is a prince of this world. You need to understand that you are in this world, but not of this world. Next, it says in verse 5, Or do you think that the scriptures says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? Now, this is not saying like what you think God is jealous. This is saying God is jealous for us, for our time. The Bible says he is a consuming fire. He wants to consume you from the inside out. God doesn't want just 50% of you, 85%, 95%. No, God wants you to be fully submitted and committed to him 100% on fire for him and his will. He desires time with you. He desires a relationship with you. He desires attention from you because he loves you and he cares about you and he wants to have a relationship with you. 
He doesn't want you to idolize the wicked things of this world that are only going to perish away. He wants you to make him first and put him first over all. He is your Lord. Next, it says right here in verse 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Listen, God has called us to walk humbly for him. Look. Jesus said, whoever humbles himself will be exalted, but whoever exalts himself will be humbled. The perfect example I can give you of this is Jesus being the son of God. God in the flesh came down for us to die for us when we were still sinners. I mean, he was beaten, tortured, ridiculed, persecuted, rejected by his own people. I mean, he served us when we did not deserve it, when we did not deserve his grace, yet he still died for us. Because he loved us that much. In the same way, we are called to walk in this exact same example. We are called to put others above ourselves and treat others the way we want to be tra- treated. We are called to serve one another and serve God. Next, it says right here in verse 7, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? Next verse right here, it says, verse 8, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So how do you resist the devil? By drawing near to God, by submitting yourself to God, by cleansing your hands, by purifying your hearts, by coming out of sin, by repenting, by, by coming out of the wicked indulgences and desires of this world. It's We resist the devil by pursuing God by pursuing Jesus. This gives us strength to resist the devil. Now listen, God loves you so, so much more than you could ever even understand, but he's not just going to force himself upon you. If you want God to come close to you, you want God to draw near to you, you must first draw near to God. You must first pursue him with all your heart. Turn away from your wicked ways and repent from the dirty junk in your lives. Man, it means praying when you don't feel like it. It means reading the word when you don't feel like it. It means loving even when what hate comes your way. Listen, I know it ain't going to be easy, but in the end, I promise you, it will be worth it.